What's going on everyone? Hope you're all doing well. On today's episode, we are starting part one of a three-part series I'm doing on John Mayer's signal chain. Part one is the basics, the foundation. Part two is gonna be intermediate. And part three is gonna be an advanced discussion on the more kind of crazy things going on with the signal chain and some things that go against the common rules, especially the ones that we're gonna be talking about today. So sit back, relax, and let's get right on into it. All right, let's get into the basics of John Mayer's signal chain, as I like to call it, John Mayer's signal chain 101. So of course, Mayer's signal chain starts off with the guitar. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, right? We're gonna plug that right on into a tuner, whether it be a Boss TU2, TU3, Polytune, whatever. John, more often than not, will run the tuner very first. Now, right after the tuner, we move on to what would be the clean boost section, and that's gonna be a Keeley Katana for John, but any clean boost will really work for what you want to do. Now, why does John run his clean boost at the very start of the signal chain and not after the drives between modulation or even at the very end? Now, we do know that John uses the Keeley Katana for two primary functions, one being a leveler for guitars that have a weaker output signal to match to the guitars that have a higher output signal or as a solo boost. Now John, when he wants to match the output, he's gonna want the signal to be the same going through the rest of the pedal board. So the katana has to be out the front to match the output and the way that signal is then gonna affect the rest of the chain. And it's kind of the same story when he uses it for a solo boost. He likes to run it in front and hit it and then it thickens up the tone and affects everything else going through the chain. Now for John, that's just the way he prefers it. You might prefer running a clean boost afterwards for the same thing that he gets out of his katana in front. It's gonna be a bit of a different feel, but there's no right or wrong answer unless you're trying to duplicate what John does. Then the katana at the very front and start of the chain after the tuner is what you're gonna wanna want. Now after the clean boost, we move on into what a lot of us like to call overdrive one because it's the first overdrive in the chain. Now why we say overdrive one is because throughout the years there have been different overdrive ones that John has used. You have the Boss BD2 Keeley modded, of course, from the trio days. You have the Marshall Blues Breaker, and you also have the Klon Centaur. So when John runs his overdrive one, majority of the time, and I mean like 98% of the time, that pedal is first before any other overdrives. He uses it for a light purpose as well as for boosting the next pedal in the chain. So if you're running the Boss BD2, the Marshall Blues Breaker especially, those were always used right after the Clean Boost Keeley Katana and before the next or any other overdrives in the signal chain. Now that of course brings us on to our second overdrive, which obviously is the Tube Screamer. Now John always likes to run this as his last overdrive in the chain, and that's getting pushed by whatever pedal is overdrive one, as well as the clean boost. And that's key to his lead tone, is that that Tube Screamer is what's getting hit by everything before it, and really thickening it up and giving him that creamy overdrive sound. Now this brings us along to the first question of the mini-series, and that is from N underscore man underscore music. Where do you put a blues driver and or a blues breaker in relationship to a tube screamer and the clon? Now, for the most part, except for the battle studies era, John has only used one overdrive one to push his tube screamer. So if you were to say have a clon and a blues breaker, here is what I would recommend and how to order them. I'd recommend keeping the blues breaker true to where it normally and always sat, which was before the Tube Screamer, and then add the Klon perhaps after the Tube Screamer. Now stacking multiple overdrives and going against what John normally does is actually gonna be in part three, the advanced part of the series, but for all intents and purposes, I would recommend putting the Klon afterwards, after the TS, so Blues Breaker, Tube Screamer, and then your Klon. If you had a Blues Breaker and a Bloss Blues Driver, I wouldn't really know where to put those in terms of being as true to Mera as possible as he always ran both of those before the Tube Screamer, so maybe keep them like I do. Blues Driver, Blues Breaker, Tube Screamer, and then you can get either Trio Tones or more Continuum where the light is tones in whichever way you want to stack against the Tube Screamer. Maybe you could do that, I don't know, but that's what I'd kind of recommend and how I would go about it. All right, so after the overdrive section, we're gonna move on into the delay section. These are really the only two parts to the basics and foundation of John Mayer's pedal board. These are parts that have always stayed true for every era. So you have your overdrives and now we're moving on into delay. The first delay pedal is going to be the Aquapus and that's used for a subtle slap back. After the Aquapus, that moves you right along into the longer delay. 
Now, on the off chance that John runs both delays on at the same time, the slapback sits first, and then you have the longer delay, so that all the long delay trails aren't getting hit with the slapback after it. And that's very important to sit in the mix, and you want your long delays to be, relatively speaking, the very last thing in the chain. Now, after that long delay, we move right on to the amp. Now, John doesn't like to use effects loops because he runs very high, headroom, clean amps. The amps aren't overdriving themselves. He relies on his overdrive pedals to get that sound. So there's no need for an effects loop because the amp isn't overdriving. And there you guys have it. That's a very quick video on the basics of John Mayer's signal chain. To recap, you have your guitar, your tuner, a clean boost, your overdrive one, blues breaker, BD2, Keely modded, Klon, then you have your tube screamer, then you have a slapback delay, and then you have your longer delay into the front of your amp. So there you guys have it. That is the basics of John Mayer's signal chain. And as you guys might have noticed, this kind of looks like the John Mayer trio pedal board. And the trio board really is as bare bones as John more often than not would get. And it really is the foundation for his signal chain and everything we're gonna talk about in part two and three is gonna build off of the basics. So I wanted to get a video out that just talked about the basics so that everyone understands this before we then move on and build from here on out. So you guys, please give the video a thumbs up. If you have any more advanced questions on John's signal chain, pop them down below before I make the next one. And until next time, you guys, thanks so much for watching. Hit subscribe, ring that bell button notification, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching, everyone.